Jeffrey Gordon uh, was uh, an engineer at IBM. So in 60s, he built what's called uh, General Purpose System Simulator, or GPSS. Somebody may have heard this abbreviation. And uh, that can be considered as the first uh, discrete event simulator in the world. Uh, discrete event modeling suggests that you look at the system you're trying to optimize and uh, try to represent it as a process. Process means sequence of operations that is performed over entities. Uh, example, the bank. So, clients arrive uh, at the bank. They open the bank door and uh, come in. And that will be our first block in the process. And what I will uh, explain is what's called process flowchart. So, clients arrive at the bank. Then, uh, some of them go directly to this uh, counter or to the window to see the teller and uh, so they need help in doing operations. Some others would go to uh, ATM and, uh, and just use ATM that is in the bank in our case. And this is a decision block. So this is source block, a typical, uh, typical object in that kind of models. And this is decision block. So it uh, divides the flow into two here and there. So as long as uh, using ATM uh, consumes a certain time, it's not instant, uh, we will observe uh, occasionally people queuing to the ATM. So delays, time delays, and queues are other fundamental elements of uh, discrete event modeling. And those people who uh, go to see and to, to be serviced by tellers uh, will also be queuing because there's a limited number of tellers serving them. Uh, tellers who are helping people are considered in that kind of language and methodology a resource. So entities are people who go flow through the process and uh, tellers are resources that are shared by entities, or let's see, seized and released by entities. And obviously the, the, uh, the, the more are the tellers, the, uh, the, um, the less long will be the queues here. So again, delay queue, but this delay is associated with using a resource. And then maybe another uh, decision block, those people who have been to ATM may join the teller lines, Otherwise, people just uh, leave the bank, go away. So process, operations, service, use ATM, delays, queues, uh, are typical elements and fundamental elements of all discrete event models. Uh, as you can see, uh, this, uh, let's say, the level of abstraction suggested by discrete event modeling is already a lot lower than that of system dynamics. In system dynamics, um, I'm not sure whether the model is still running. No, the model is not running, but um, I want to run it to show you one interesting thing. Look here. we. At the moment, we have 3,469.441 clients. Can that be in reality? No, because you know people are uh, hopefully uh, discrete uh, <laughs> units. However, system dynamics doesn't know about it. System dynamics only aggregates how many. Uh, and these stocks are actually just variables of real type, nothing, <clears throat> nothing like that. They're, people don't have individualities here. They're all perfectly mixed. And that is a fundamental perfect mix, this fundamental assumption in um, system dynamics.
in, in this Kriven modeling, people are individual entities. They can have different parameters associated with them. We can say, okay, uh, that guy wants to open an account, therefore the delay over, over here will be longer than the delay for this guy who wants just you know, to, to cash a check. So uh, level obstruction is lower. We do model individual objects, entities, uh, and we try to represent things in terms of a process. So uh, I'll briefly show you how to build a model like that. So I'll uh, mm, in this case, I will not be using System Dynamics Palette because uh, I, I've chosen different abstraction level and different language. I will use this enterprise library. This is where the process elements are located in any logic. I'll start with source. Call it clients arrive. After they arrive, they decide whether to use ADM or to uh, go to C tellers. Uh, let's model ATM. So ATM, uh, usage of ATM is a delay. And as long as usage of ATM involves the delay, there will be inevitably a queue before uh, that delay. U to ADM. Uh, all right, others go to tellers. So I'll pull the uh, service block here. And uh, tellers are resources. Uh, as you may remember, those people who have used the ATM uh, may still want to join the queues to the tellers, so there will be another decision block. that. Uh, otherwise, people leave. The block that removes entities from the model is typically called sync. Um, it does nothing, well, it does actually the operations uh, opposite to generating new entities. So uh, this is source and this is sync. This is where entities disappear from the model. Okay, um, so I put together the process uh, and I can run this model. So something is happening. 
these numbers are the uh, numbers of people that followed a particular branch in this process. So this, you see this from time to time, this guy is either uh, idle or, or being used. Same for the tellers. Um, when it, it goes dark, orange means that all tellers are actually busy. And at, uh, at the moment, I think we do have only one teller in there. So the, the process is actually uh, working fine. But uh, what are the parameters to the system? Let's, let's enter some um, meaningful parameters because at the moment the model is just running with the uh, whatever are the default parameters of those blocks. So uh, let's say service, service time uh, at the counter. Mm, if time unit, we can assume time unit is minutes. So let's say it's uh, triangularly distributed with minimum time, mm, two minutes, most typical, uh, five minutes, and uh, the longest possible time, 20 minutes. What else? Usage of ADM. Mm, let's use another distribution. Uniform from, let's say, half minute to three minutes. How frequently do people uh, enter the bank? Right now, the rate is one person per minute. Maybe that's uh, too, too rapid for us. Let's say... Uh, one person per three minutes, something like that. So let's run the model. The ATM is doing okay. But uh, when I ran it in the fast mode, you see that this queue has an overflow. We have 100 entities in the queue, and by default, the size of the maximum allowed size of the queue in this object is 100. So uh, it looks like the tellers are not capable of serving that, um, that big uh, client flow. Uh, one of the greatest advantages of simulation model is that we can actually visualize things. So let's build some simple animation attached to this model. I will um, draw a polyline. And I will draw a uh, rectangle here. So I'm interested in this uh, service point. So I'll say that I want to animate my, okay, this, this is polyline, I call it polyline view. And that will be rectangle service. So I'll say that my queue of people uh, waiting to be serviced will be animated as polyline queue and uh, people that who are being serviced rectangle service. Yep. And uh, let's say my people will be animated as person. So I dropped the uh, 
some standard icon from this pictures palette. And I'll say the clients who, are, who arrive at the bank will be animated as person. Sorry. The, um, probably the uh, animation, yes, because we're, we'll be animating people inside a rectangle and uh, animation type then should be not path, but uh, let's say arranged. That was my, uh, my error. So you see that the, uh, as we suspected, the queue actually grows here. There is no people in the queue to ATM, so one ATM is uh, okay. And as this queue reaches 100 people, the model will just throw an error. So a typical experiment with a system like that would be to uh, say, at a, let's vary the number of tellers. So my Q grows, but I will, in a while, like five tellers. Five tellers are doing good. How many four tellers? Also good. Maybe I don't need four tellers. Maybe I would need just Three of them, also good. Okay, I can actually do two. Yes. Uh, two people, no, it's uh, not enough. I need to hire some more, so I'll. And these are very, very typical things that would, you would do with the discrevan model. You put together the process, uh, and you experiment with actually the process architecture, uh, what, what's, what is, what's done first, what's next, uh, and with the resource uh, capacities. So like staffing is a typical test that will be addressed by that kind of model, like uh, how many forklift trucks uh, at the warehouse, um, how many drivers, uh, how many nurses, uh, what should be the optimal shifts of those nurses. These are typical things to ask a uh, uh, discrete van model. Uh, okay, any, um, any questions so far? Yes. Mm, pardon? So, yes, correct. Well, I'll answer very briefly because at the end of the day, uh, I have a slide exactly answering this, this year question. So I'd say uh, simulation is used, let's say, to optimize existing things. Let's say you've already built a warehouse and you want to like, <clears throat> understand how many, uh, what kind of staff levels sh there should be. Uh, simulation can be used to, uh, let's say, plan things that you, uh, or optimize things that you plan to build. You, something may be non-existent, but you want to understand where, where to build things. Or, uh, uh, and sometimes a simulation is used at, uh, like on a day-to-day -day basis to optimize processes that, that really go on. So uh, that's all I say now, but after the break, we will be looking at the examples, um, example, industrial example models with all these you know, three 
um, types of simulation usage. So uh, very diverse things from day-to-day -day operational planning for to strategic to make making strategic decisions. Okay, other questions, please. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So you're asking whether uh, there were cases when we, we or our clients were starting building model and because of the wrong assumptions or something missed, the, the model did behave in the wrong way. Absolutely, that happens in, uh, I'd say, in every real project. The important thing is that you should not leave the modeler alone, you know, like, model this and just he <clears throat> gets silent for months. Iterations with a client or with a domain expert are one of the essential things in, in model. Again, we will be talking about this more after the break, but yes, uh, absolutely. The more iterations you do, so you, you did something, show it to the client, okay, does your like warehouse really work like that? Like make him look into it. Uh, analyze model outputs and they make changes to the model. This is the uh, uh, essential things and uh, they are essential uh, from the uh, point of view of like how successful will, will it be simula simulation project. So yes, absolutely. This happens every now and then. On the other hand, I have to warn you that one of the uh, uh, typical great mistakes made by the modeler as uh, the model is always attempted to model everything, to, you know, to rebuild the whole world in its uh, diversity and complexity in, in his computer. And that's, this is a completely wrong thing to do because uh, when building the model, you should always ask yourself, what's the purpose of the model? Uh, why am, uh, am I building the model? Uh, what, what, what kind of outputs, uh, what kind of problem I'm solving? And uh, if something is, you, if you're not sure something is needed in the model, just don't model it. Uh, it's okay if, you're, if, you're, if your model is as simple as that, or uh, the, if it solves the problem. So, you know, modeling, a lot of things uh, is almost always uh, uh, a mistake. <clears throat>